at Circuit City, the big names you want are all under one roof, all at unbeatable low prices. Plus, get your choice of 0% interest for 12 months on any computer or 10% off any computer. Like this Packard Bell 486SX33 with monitor, just $1099.94 with 0% or $989.95 after 10% off. And this Magnavox 25-inch TV is just $277.97. You bought it, Matt. You gotta handle it. If you buy something at Circuit City, then see it advertised for less, just come back. Our low price guarantee means you'll get the difference. Uh, excuse me. Mm hmm. Last week I bought this. Plus 10% of the difference. And today I saw this. Just opened the paper and there it was. It's that easy. Yeah. That's it? That's it. Cool. Yeah, my brother-in-law, he's always inviting me over to watch his big, fancy TV. And you hate him for it. So you want something bigger and better for a lot less money. Yeah. At Circuit City, we have all the hottest new TVs, from HDTV to plasma, LCD, and more. And with unbeatable prices guaranteed, you'll find the perfect one. Circuit City. So, word in retail is, is that Circuit City is making a comeback. Who would have knew? But what made them shut down their operations to begin with? Well, let's dig right into it, shall we? It all started in 1949 where former businessman slash founder Samuel S. Wurzel was on vacation in Richmond, Virginia. He was in a barber shop getting his hair cut when a barber told him that the very first Southern television station was going to air. With that being said, that inspired Wurzel to think of an even bigger image with television. But what was it? Before then, Wurzel was born in Seabright, New Jersey and imported and exported products in New York City for nine years. He started that work in 1938. Now back to 1949, nine years later, Wurzel thought of a brilliant marketing strategy for televisions and moved his family down to Richmond, Virginia. He opened his very first store as well selling TVs. It was called Wards, and thus a retail legend was born. Ten years later in 1959, Wards is operating four stores in the Richmond area. They're also selling home appliances along with their TVs. The company earned annual sales of a million dollars. The name Wards came from Wurzel's family. The W as of their last name, the A as in Wurzel's son Alan, who later joins the company in 1966, R for Ruth, Wurzel's wife, and D for David, Wurzel's other son. In 1961, the company goes public. In 1974, Wards opens its very first consumer electronics store called the Wards Loading Dock. It was until 1984 when Wards changed its name to what we know it as, Circuit City. Founder Samuel Wurzel also steps down as CEO in 1984. He then passes away the next year. His son took over but also steps down not too long afterwards. People seem to really enjoy the concept of the store. The products are selling, the people are buying, the company even hits a high of a billion dollars for the first time in 1987. Things are good, but what's the strategy? Why is this place doing so good? Well, I do have a couple of answers thanks to encyclopedia.jrank.org where it specifically talks about the business's history. But here we go. One line states that in the mid-1970s, customers really enjoyed the quantity of their products along with the low prices and high-level customer service, which is why the company blew up in the 80s and 90s. In 1984 alone, Circuit City had 110 stores, which was really good around the time. They were the leading retailer of brand name Consumer Electronics. By the 1990s though, they had nearly 300 stores operating and even had plans to open 200 more locations. There was just one problem, Best Buy. Around the time in the 1990s, Best Buy began to be Circuit City's main concern and competition. But despite that competition, in 1995, Circuit City had sales up to about $7 billion, and sales slash earnings were rising by 20% annually. They also made a new store chain called CarMax. I'm sure you've heard of it. Though it sounded like a great idea around the time, it didn't really last that long for the company, and both decided to move on as CarMax would become its very own business. In 1996, Best Buy officially passes Circuit City and being named the number one electronics store. 
the competitiveness was still there for both sides. I'm sure this got to Circuit City, so in 1998 they decided to create something out of the ordinary. They created a digital movie disc called a, excuse me, DivX. Sorry, that's a pretty hard word to say. DivX. But that's what they made. And to be honest, that didn't really go to plan either. Ouch. Other stores refused to sell this item due to the fact that they feared that it would undermine their business, so Circuit City, along with this other place called Good Guys, sold these digital movie discs. In 1999, Circuit City made over $10 billion in revenue. Now we're getting closer to the fall, but still have things to discuss. Entering the 2000s, there's been some corporate changes. Then President and COO Alan McCauley was promoted to President and CEO of the company, replacing former CEO Richard Sharp, who was Alan Wurzel's successor. Keep in mind, Alan Wurzel was Samuel Wurzel's son. Richard Sharp would remain chairman for two years. Okay, so the fall. What exactly happened? Well, somehow the store's environment grew stale on the people as Best Buy still keeps rising surpassing the 600 store mark in the early 2000s. And just like Kmart, Circuit City stores were outdated and some just being in bad areas. They eventually came up with this big box term called Horizon to their newer stores, and honestly, it does look a lot nicer, but I don't think it took the right approach because despite these changes, the company still struggled. So now we're going to skip ahead to some of the reasons why this company failed so badly, and then take a closer look at its comeback which was recently announced. So I found an old article online back in 2008 on CBSNews.com, and this article explains it better than I could ever imagine, and it was very straightforward and informative. It explains eight reasons why Circuit City went into bankruptcy. Here we go. Number one, their sales on their popular brands have plummeted. Number two, CarMax. CarMax had a lot to do with this as this distracted Circuit City. It took away a lot of the professional standards that it once had in their own stores. Number three, these stores were too big in size and seemed detached. Number four, Circuit City could not maintain their focus and seemed uninventive as Best Buy is going off the chains. Number five, I guess you can say that they opened up way too many stores. They were trying to please Wall Street analysts, but it turns out that their eyes were bigger than their stomachs in this case. Number six. To save money, they beridden their commissions for the employees and instead went off of an hourly rate. Number seven. When things got tougher, plenty of sea suitors and directors came and went. And last but least, number eight. Commercial credit. It became very tight for the company, making things even tougher. So those are the eight reasons why Circuit City went out of business. In 2008, they went bankrupt. They closed 155 stores, let off 17% of their workforce, and released 500 to 800 corporate employees from the Richmond, Virginia location. Okay, so in 2009, they completely vanish. Seven years later, the name is mentioned again. In 2016, CEO Ronnie Schmall refounded the company. He even had plans to open up 10,000 stores within five years. This was announced back in 2016, keep in mind. The store planned on opening in June 2016, but was postponed. Nearly two years later or so, here we are. In January of 2018, it was announced that Circuit City would launch its website on February 15th. They're also going to open up kiosks, stores within other stores, and their very own showrooms. The stores are going to range from 2,000 to 4,000 square feet. There is also information stating that Circuit City will be selling a range of items from smartphones to drones. Plus, there's even better news for the employees. The commission pay is back. This all sounds great, but the question is, will it work? Circuit City coming back is like having everything you've ever wanted to happen, but just to face a little bit of reality here, they still have to deal with competitors like Amazon, Walmart, Target, and Best Buy. And yes, even Best Buy is somewhat struggling in the mix. I know that owner Ronnie Schmoll wants to do everything correct and not backwards. Will this be easy for Circuit City? Will this be hard for Circuit City? There are still a lot of unanswered questions, but only time will tell. Best of luck to this electronic retailer. 
Almost a decade after doors closed on Circuit City locations across the country, the company is planning a comeback. But the old big box electronics store won't look exactly the same. The retailer announced its comeback will begin on February 15th with a website followed by a series of kiosks and then stores within stores. The current company's CEO says artificial intelligence will play a big role in the online experience. Coming back. Well, everything old is new again. Yes, it is. <laughs>